الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم with the last name the most gracious, the most merciful. Alhamdulillah, the praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, full of mercy and compassion. We say that Allah is always of the will to guide us, to help us in every way, to keep us on the Surat al Mustaqim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa waqtuhu la sharika lahu. Wa ashadu an la muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluhu. There is nothing deserving our worship, our life of service, or our complete trust except Allah. Alone that is, wa waqtuhu la sharika lahu. the creator of everything and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the universal messenger to whom Allah sent the Quran is his is his messenger the final prophet and Allah he tells us of him that he is rahmatan lil alameen that he's a mercy to all the worlds <coughs> Alhamdulillahi Rabbi Alameen. Allah, he tells us, he mentions to us in the Quran, A'udhu Balahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem, Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu taqu allaha haqqa tiqatihi, wa la tunmuntuna illa wa antum muslimun. To fear Allah as Allah should be feared.
Hakka Tipati here with the emphasis on the on taqwa. Fear Allah with the correct taqwa, with the correct, the correct, the proper regard. Tupati he. Wala wa wala tun mun tuna illa wa and tu muslimun. And do not die unless you are Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Allah asks us to fear him. And Allah also asks us to heed, to respond to the call. The call we just heard, the Adhan. The Adhan is a, is a, is a call. And it is a call to respond. It's a call we're supposed to respond to. We don't just hear it. We respond if we heard it. Alhamdulillah, <clears throat> Rabbi Allah lets us know that Allah is our creator. Unlike any other thing, or like anything in creation, Allah is above all of it. He is the one that is, Allah is the one who is our cherisher, our Rabb. Allah doesn't change like we change. You know, we're seasonal. Sometimes we hot, sometimes we cold. But Allah never changes. Allah is always as Allah always will be. <coughs> Allah says that Allah is always at work in his creation. And Allah's will becomes Allah's word in the human being and man. Allah's speech is not like our speech. It's not sound or voice like our voices. When Allah speaks, air doesn't move, nor does a tongue or a mouth. The prophets hear the words of Allah without sound or language, and the righteous believers will see Allah without physical form in the Akhira. We said that Allah is al-Khaliq, al-Khaliq al kulli shayn, the creator of everything. <clears throat> and we're created matter, the human beings are created matter. And we're saying this to say that as, as, as products of creation, when we're supposed to respond to the call of our creator, we're supposed to react. The human being being the highest form of creation has an obligation to react to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has an obligation to react to that. He can't excuse himself from reacting like maybe a, an animal, an a common animal. A common animal, he's not being called, but the human being is being called. He's being requisitioned. <clears throat> Allah evolved the human being out of matter, the matter of creation. And a human being will never be anything more than created matter. And Allah blessed the human being with Allah's spirit so that man could rise above created matter. The prophets, the seers, the learned, the emir, the sultan, the, the alim, the ulama, the preacher, the imam, the monarch, the male, the female, are all created and none of them are anything like Allah. Allah says, Allah revealed in the Quran, no just estimate have they made of Allah such as do him. On the day of judgment, the whole of the earth will be but his handful, and the heavens will be rolled up in his right hand. Glory to him. High is Allah above the partners they attribute to him. So Allah makes it clear that Allah is our creator, and Allah is a teacher through what Allah created. And Allah is appealed into our rationale and our reason and abilities. And he wants us as human beings to serve to serve him. But we can only serve Allah 
if we respond to Allah. If we don't respond, if we don't respond, we didn't hear something. The adhan, when it's called, it's, it comes from the same word that me, the ear comes from. And when you hear something, you respond to it like accordingly. This beautiful call to prayer, it has in it certain things. The Muezzin, he says, Hayya ala salah, to come, they translate that rush to prayer or to come to prayer. And then it says, Hayya ala falah, to rush or to come to success. So in the very, the very nature of the adhan itself or the call that is given to us, it's asking us to come alive so that we can be successful. It's asking us to do something. It's, it's asking us to live. But it's not asking us to live any kind of way. It's asking us to live a, the Muslim life, the life that Allah wants us to live as Muslims. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah, here what I mean. Allah, he says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَإِنْسَانِ I have only created jinn and men that they may serve me. Now we know that the angels serve Allah, but here we find Allah mentions the jinn and the men together, and that they are to that they are created to render service to Allah. The human beings and the jinn. Allah tells us that the angels and the jinn were already in existence before man. But what is all this addressing? What is revelation addressing? Why is creation addressed and where is it all going? What is it leading to? We find that Allah created man, then he makes man into Khalifa. Now when Allah, when Allah makes us like Allah make us, you know, maybe, maybe we don't think the human being is all that, you know, because we run into people and sometimes we run into people, we don't think much of them. You know, the average, sometimes, you know, we look at the average person, we say, oh, well, you know, we don't think that much of them. But Allah created every human being on this earth to be Khalifa. He says, that he made noble and dignified all of the descendants of Adam. So no matter what another person might think, we're supposed to respond to what Allah is guiding us to in the Quran and in the life of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's what we're always supposed to be about. We're not supposed to allow ourselves to be, become despondent or to become disenfranchised by what other people think or what other people feel or what other people want. We're supposed to respond to the life that Allah is calling us to. Hayya ala salam. We're supposed to respond to the life that comes from the prayer, from the practice, from the prayer itself. And the whole Muslim life is a life of prayer. Everything in the Muslim life is salah. If it is something Allah approves of, the whole life becomes halal. If it's something that Allah disapproves of, then the life becomes haram. So Allah asks of us in the, in the call on Fridays, and on every day, if we understand it, to, to come to live, to live the life, the way the life is supposed to be lived. We can't say that enough. In many cases, we reduce to seeing things like just every, everyday people. We remind, us, we remind ourselves that Muslims are not everyday people. Muslims are not, we're not to see ourselves as just every common run of the mill even though we may be in some sense. But we are, but we are a special, we're also a special people. Because Muslim means one who submits. And we know that that means one who submits to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when, one is, when, when a person is submitting to Allah, then that person is of the highest caliber. Because all of us are supposed to enter into the service of Allah. We go to Allah as a servant. We all are abd. And the highest, the highest position that we can have is Abdullah. You know, we have people by the name of Abdullah, means servant of Allah. You know, they said they call Muhammad Muhammad Ibn Abdullah. He's a, his father's name was Abdullah, but it means servant of Allah. 
And we all are supposed to be Abdullah. In every, in every part of our life, it's supposed to bear witness to our service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have, to res- we have to be of a people who actually respond. And we're supposed to be of a people who actually respond to this adhan that we hear. Many of you have it adhan on your smartphone. Now, the phone ain't supposed to be smarter than us. They call it a smartphone, but it ain't supposed to be smarter than we are. But the phone is programmed to call the then at the exact time the exam is supposed to be called. The, the phone is programmed like that. Now, somebody, the phone didn't program itself to do that. Somebody, a person did that. And the person who did it might not pray at all. But when we hear it, when we hear that on our smartphones five times a day, now, we don't really, we don't really have an excuse anymore. You know, I can remember coming up in this, this part of society a long time ago. We didn't hear that then. We didn't have all this technology. We didn't have all of that. Some people run from technology. We didn't have all that technology before. But now we, got, we have these, these phones. We got, we got things that will let us know exactly when it is time to pray. It will call the then for you. Just like we heard the, the clock over there chime off it. Call, it's going to call it right for you. And if, when, you hear, when you hear it, what are you doing when you hear it? You have to, even if you hear it, you're supposed to respond to it. You're supposed to, it is, it is reminding you that this is the time that you are supposed to what? Remember Allah. This is the time for you to remember Allah. Why? And you have to be constantly reminded throughout the whole course of the day. Because from Fajr time to Dhuhr time, you might have forgot everything. And from Dhuhr time to Asa time, you know that now that we, we're in the summer months, the prayers are getting spread out. You know, Isha prayer come in at, you know, nine o'clock, after nine now. And then by the time summer gets here, it'll be late. So you got all this big, a, a lot of time between each prayer. So it's enough time for you to get caught up into something. And by the time you get caught up into it, by the time you remember it, it's an, another prayer will be in. Or it might be tomorrow. So here we have all this technology. We have all of these modern conveniences. We've been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we still don't respond in the context and in the way that we're supposed to respond. We still don't react in the way that we're supposed to react. We still don't do it. With all of this modern and modernization, we still have a difficulty doing the, thing, doing the things that are supposed to be done in the way that they're supposed to be done. We're being pulled in every direction by something else. And when we hear that then, we almost turn, a, almost turn the, ear, the, the ear to almost goes blank. So Allah wants us to respond when we hear, when we hear the call, this call to the life that a Muslim should be living. Allah wants us to respond to that like Muslims should respond. I mean. Alhamdulillah, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <coughs> Again, there is no deity, there is no God except Allah alone by Allah's own self. And Allah is one that needs nothing from any of us. Allah doesn't need anything from any human being. We need each other. We need something. But Allah doesn't need anything. So when Allah mentions to us that we're to be servants, then we have to take that as we have to serve the best interest of each other. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. You know, this month, you know, this is one of the sacred months. This is the month of Rajab, the seventh month. This is the month in which Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ascended. And, you know, Prophet Muhammad's ascension is our ascension. In other words, his going up is our going up. 
You just think, you know, if he didn't, if he didn't go up, we wouldn't go up. But um, the, his ascension is ours also. It's the ascension of, the, it represent, it's representative of the ascension of the entire Muslim, Muslim uh, ummah. All of us. Because he's representing, he's representing all of us. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah, hear Rabbi Alameen. So, you know, it's, that's supposed to be a special time. How many of us keep up with them kind of dates? You know, in this part of the world, now you in another part of the world, you might keep up with those dates better. It's like Ramadan is coming pretty soon. It'll be Ramadan in a few weeks now, five, six weeks. Yeah, it won't be long. But, you, but this month precedes that. And that time, and where we mentioned that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ascended. You know, now, uh, when, we say something, when we say something is going up, what are, what are we saying? We're saying it's responding. Yeah, if, you, if, 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 if your life is moving upwards, you're responding to something. If it's moving down, you're responding to something. But nonetheless, if your life is taking on a particular form or a particular shape, it's because of whatever, it's whatever, it's because of what you're responding to. Alhamdulillah, hear Rabbi Ali mean. If we're responding, that means that you're listening. And if you're listening, that means you're learning. And if you're learning, that means you're growing. So if you responded, you heard. And that means you're interested. If you're interested in something, whatever you're interested in, that's what you're going to devote yourself to. You're going to be devoted to what your interests are. You know, and sometimes you have to Think about what you're interested in. If there's no real interest, there's no real life. And if there's no interest at all, there's no life at all. You know, it's just like, especially young people, if you want to reach young people, you have to show them you care. Then you can show them something. Even though that's true for a lot of us. But in other words, don't, we'll say, don't show me nothing. Don't, don't show me nothing if you don't care. Don't, don't show me something if you're not interested in me, if you're not concerned. So we're supposed to be responding to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it gives an indication that we're interested in it. We're interested in what? We're interested in al-Islam, and we're interested in the proper, the proper etiquette and the proper demonstration, the proper way that al-Islam is supposed to be lived. So when we hear Hayya al salam Allah is al high, the living. That's what that means. It's coming from the same word that the living is coming from. But they say rush. So he says, Hayya al salam when we hear that, then he's saying to come alive. And if you're coming alive, that means you're interested in the life. Whatever life it is that you're interested in, that's the life you're living. It might not be the Muslim life, but it, it should be. If we're Muslim, the life that we're supposed to be interested in is Muslim life. And if we don't know what that life is, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to find out what that life is. So we mentioned before that the Jumu'ah, the, the, the day of assembly, this is the day we gather, but what do we get out of the Friday? If it's not carried over into Talim, if it's not carried on into education, it's not carried on another day. If it's not carried on another day, we just we just fill in a square. You, you can't live your Muslim life just fill in a square on Friday. Your Muslim life has to be lived in the context that it should be every single day of the week, because it doesn't take long for Shaitan to come in and take your life over. We're living in that kind of society. We're living in the kind of society where Satan is under control here. Well, Allah is, un Allah is in control, but Satan is under control. If you can get what I'm saying. Satan is under control. Allah is in control. But if Satan is going to do Satan's work 
Shaitan is going to do what Shaitan is going to do and don't care about how, you, how, how it's paying out for any of us. So we're supposed to respond to the call. We're supposed to react. But perhaps we just don't hear it enough. Perhaps we don't hear it enough. Because something out there is always going to be pulling at us. It's going to be pulling us in another direction. So really, technically, we should, we should, we should play that play call, uh, uh, recite the uh, uh, then all day. We shouldn't even let it go off. We should just let it keep running. Let's let it keep circulating. You know how they do that. Just, just when it gets to the end, start over. You know, because one of the things I say a lot, if you knew me, I would tell people when we're talking, you're not listening. But where we fail mostly in life is we fail to listen. We're quick to speak. We're quick to make our point. But most of the time, we fail to listen to the point that's being made to us. When we hear there, then the point that's being made is what? Allah Akbar. Allah is greater. What greater than what? Greater than any possible anything you can possibly think of. So we begin. We hear that from the from Fajr. When you wake up, you wake up to the then. You wake up to Taqwa. You wake up to Tawheed. You wake up to God consciousness. That's the first. The first thing is to be conscious of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, because Allah is the bigger. Allah is greater. Allah is more important. Allah is in charge of all the things that exist, whether we know it or not, whether we realize it or not. And if he wants it not to exist, it won't exist. Allah can get rid of any of us anytime. Some of us act like we're going to be here forever. We might want to be. I don't think you really want to be. If you can, if you, but you, you're not going to be. So we have to listen. When we hear the call, we're supposed to respond to it. We're supposed to have the right focus, the right interest, and the correct focus and the correct interest is Allahu Akbar, that Allah is greater. Greater than anything that we become, become involved in. We, we said before, Allah says on, on, the, on the Friday, on Juma, be quick to remember Allah and stop everything you're doing. Leave off business and traffic. Stop everything you're doing. And Allah says, that's better for you if you only knew. And then once you disperse, then go seek the bounties of Allah. But then he goes, he comes behind and says, but still remember Allah much. Yeah, the remembrance of Allah is a big thing. It's definitely a big thing for us because we live in a society where it's plentiful. When Ramadan comes, it'll be people, there's people doing Ramadan already. They're not eating today. They're, not, they're fasting because the circumstances just make it like that. But we live in a society where oh, you can run up to McDonald's, you can get, you can, you can chow down all day long. You don't have, we don't have hardly any issue. Even the, some of the poorest of the poor can get what get food here. We're supposed to respond, and we're supposed to respond much, much better than we do. You know, I was I'm just going through my. I don't want to. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on my notes because I have a whole bunch of things I want to say. I just can't. I don't have the time to say them. But we'll say we'll so we'll say this, and that is. Whatever you're interested in, that's what you're going to spend your time with. That's where you're going. That's what's going to. That's what's going to. Uh, that's what you're listening to. That's what's coming into your ear. That's what's being. That's what's motivating us. Because we're, we're motivated by what we hear. And lastly, we mentioned that on Fridays also, it's a tradition for us to read Surah al -Kah. Said that we said that I think we said that the last five or six times we've been standing across this roster. That on Friday, we're supposed to read the surah titled "The Cave." And I told some brothers yesterday that if you read that surah every week, oh, 
in a year's time, you had read it 52 times. And if, it, if, that, if, the, if, the, if the things that you read in that particular surah, because this is one of the only ones that I know of that we're supposed to read in its entirety on Friday. And we're, we're also mentioned, it's also mentioned that we should memorize the first 10 and the last 10 ayah. It's mentioned, it's mentioned that we should do that. And so that particular surah will impact, if that particular surah doesn't impact your life in a dynamic, in a, in a dynamic way, then something wrong. By the time you read that over and over and over and over again, and over and over and over and over again. Now, how many of us read it today? I don't know. I won't even question that. That's not my business. I'm only mentioning that that's what we're supposed to do. That's one of the things we're required to do. It's to familiarize ourselves with that particular surah. Okay. God, I mean. So whatever it is, again, that we're interested in, that's what is going to motivate us. That's what, that's what we're going to spend our time with. Allah, he says, Laysa lil insana illa masa'a. That the human being, that the person doesn't get anything except what he makes an effort for. That's all we're going to get. Whatever you put some horsepower behind, that's what you're going to get. Whatever you put some emphasis on, that's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to end up with. So it is nothing for man except what he strives for, what he makes an effort for. So, Ya'i haladhina aminu, taqullaha hekka tiqatihi, wa la tunmuntuna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, give Allah the proper taqwa. Fear Allah as Allah should be feared. Regard Allah as Allah should be regarded. And don't die unless you're Muslim. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama asalaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama baraka ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Feel all of me in a camera do my GM and the camera, please. Long up, but long up, but I should lay in a little more. I should have never had mother or so to law. Higher on a son at the higher on a fellow. But the government is so Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanirrahim. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا السورة المستقيم السورة الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hell 
ਬਟੂੰ ਦੇ ਫੀਦੇ ਚੈਫਲੇ ਰਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੀਏ ਤੂਸ ਕੋ ਮੀਨ ਆਈਨੀ ਨੇ ਲਈ ਫਲੇ ਹੂੰ ਤਾਮੂਨ ਲੈ ਮੀਨ ਦੜੀ ਲੈ ਯੂਸ ਮੀਨੂ ਵਲੇ ਯੂਗਨੀ ujo ya mai din ai me li sai hara dia fi jinat na miya la taf ma hu fi ha la kiya fi ha ainu jariya fi ha sururu السلام عليك 
عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Announcements. Uh-huh. Yeah, we have a few announcements. We have. You, uh, you gonna make? Yeah. You wanna make this? Oh, great. Okay. I'm gonna make. I got it. Uh, we have the soup kitchen tomorrow. I appreciate the don- uh, the no- donation. We have the sisters selling dinner downstairs. We have the uh, uh, clinic tomorrow. We have the uh, what's it called? The uh, Sunday. Sunday is the open house. Uh, open house. Sunday the open house. Any more uh, questions? All right. I was just going to say, on Sunday's open house, we have uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Zubair Ahmed. He's going to be our keynote speaker. Uh, and the theme for that program, I don't have it in front of me. So, But uh, see, what is that theme for that? Anybody got one of the flyers for me so I can say it right? But anyway, it's, you know, in, in light of, uh, you know, current events and the need to be neighborly and things like that, it's, the theme is around the topic of neighbors. I think it says uh, uh, the best, best kept secrets, your neighbor. And uh, so uh, we'd appreciate it if you all would uh, attend that, support that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and all that. Any questions or anything? Anything else? It's warm, it's warm, it's warm. That's right. it. Assalamu alaikum. Right. Don't forget your donations and pay the God. Thank oh. you. Yeah, right here in that box. Oh, I thought you were giving up donations. <laughs>